Okay, here is one more decomposition exercise in which the geometric vectors are arranged in a very special way. All of the vectors in the picture are unit length. This angle right here is 90 degrees and this angle is 45 degrees. And the task is to decompose the vector C as a linear combination of A and B. Now, if you think that this example is tricky, I will agree with you. In fact, this is as complicated a decomposition exercise as I would ever attempt or expect anyone else to be able to do. So you might actually be wondering why are we doing these tricky exercises instead of learning new linear algebra concepts? Well, number one, this is developing your brain in a very positive way. Number two, this is helping you get used to geometric vectors and to treat them on their own terms without any background coordinate systems. And finally, being able to do these sorts of calculations quickly and more importantly, accurately will come in handy quite a bit in many of the later topics. So for all of these reasons, I feel that being able to do this is very important. So how are we going to approach this problem? So it will actually take two steps. I think the best way to do it is in two steps. Step number one is to decide to go after the vector a. Well, maybe I gave it away already. What I should have said first is pause the video and try to figure it out on your own. Now you already have a little hint. So here is the rest of it. Let's go for the vector a instead of the vector c. And then manipulate the result algebraically to get what we want. Now, why is it better to go after the vector a than the vector c? Well, that's because my eye picks out that the vector a is aligned with this direction. So it is related to c minus b. a is related to c minus b. But it's not the right length. Why is it not the right length? Well, because c minus b, the length of c minus b, is actually square root of 2. You can see it by the by Pythagoras' theorem from this triangle. It's an isosceles triangle with a 90 degree angle. So square root of 1 plus 1, square root of 2. The length of c minus b is square root of 2. Let me write it in here for a visual. You know what? In fact, I'll draw in c minus b and hopefully it'll work. Okay, not bad. So here is c minus b. It points in the right direction, but it's the wrong length. It's length square root of 2 instead of 1. So we need to scale it. We need to multiply it by a number that would make it the right length. And that number, of course, is simply 1 over square root of 2. So what we have just discovered is that a equals 1 over square root of 2 c minus 1 over square root of 2 b. So this is as simple as one of the exercises from the last video with the additional step of rescaling. And so we're done with that. And now all we have to do is solve for c, which of course can be done by taking this term and bringing it over to the left hand side and multiplying both sides by square root of 2. So we will have a, excuse me, square root of 2 times a plus b. So a, so c equals square root of 2 times a plus b. Excuse me, plus b. So I have to put a 1 here. So I stumbled because in my mind I was making sure that these numbers are correct and not reversed. But I believe that is correct because when you multiply both sides of the equation by square root of 2, a picks up the square root of 2 and b stays with 1. Okay, so there you go. This was our final example of decomposition that can be done by sight by taking advantage of the special arrangement of the vectors that were given. So now it's time to consider a more general situation and to ask the question, what will you do if the vectors are not arranged in any special way? What we're looking for is something robust, something very systematic, something that you can use in any situation for any vectors A and B and any 
third vector, C, to have a systematic way of identifying the coefficients so that if you combine A and B with those coefficients in a linear combination, the result would be C. That's the topic of the next video.